All right, good morning and welcome to the Monday Morning Motivational Zoom. My name is Austin Zuloff out here in Lexington, Kentucky. I appreciate you getting on today. Could have been anywhere in the world, but I think it's a good idea that you're here with us as well because we've got some important stuff to go over this morning. We're gonna have some fun, grab something to take some notes. I find a lot of times it's not necessarily the message that matters most. It's what you're looking to get out of the message. And so today, um, I've just, I've had this message you know, uh, for the past few days on my heart, in my mind that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to deliver. And so I want to make sure, ah, yep, everyone was looking down. I thought it was frozen for a second. Uh, here in Kentucky, we pipe in sunlight, right? We just got indoor outhouses a while back. And uh, so my internet freezes up every once in a while. I thought that's what had happened, but everyone was just looking down to take some notes. That's good stuff. So um, I want to get into a little bit about uh, something that has been referred to as the secret to success. But before I do, and I'm going to give you tips, I'm going to give you some, some good bullet points that you can execute on immediately and get results and feel good about it too. But before I do, I want to share a personal story. So uh, years ago, I think I was 20. Um, so I was like, you know, three or four years ago. I, um, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, staying at, staying at the Sheraton uh, Hotel, the Music City Hotel. And uh, a bunch of us, I used to smoke cigarettes. I know it's a horrible habit, but I used to smoke cigarettes and chew tobacco sometimes at the same time. I'm a true Kentuckian, right? And uh, so we were all standing outside, you know, spitting and smoking. It was wonderful. And uh, there was a, a brand new Mercedes 6 Series that pulled up. A uh, gentleman got out of the car, shoes, just mirrors, right? Nice pinstripe suit, white shirt, pink tie, pocket handkerchief, French cuff, grabbed a uh, alligator skin briefcase out of the back, personified success. I knew the gentleman, his name was Bob Palmer, good friend of the family, great guy. And uh, so I caught him in the hallway uh, as a fanboy should. And, you know, I, I said, hey, Bob, you've made at least tens of millions of dollars in the direct selling profession. What, um, what's one key that you can give me that I can pass along to other people? He said, you know, that's a good question, but um, I think it would be better if I answered that in front of the class. We were there for junior executive training level four. And I said, okay, cool. So we get in there, he walks in and writes on the, uh, the whiteboard, goal setting, the secret to success. I'm just like, that's it? You know, but he gave some great tips and I found one of my old notepads and uh, I wanted to pass along some information that I learned. Don't, don't just take this as another goal setting session because that's not what it is. Uh, this is some stuff that is, is, kind of the secret sauce behind goal setting, okay? Hopefully you have some sort of a B-H-A-D, a big, hairy, audacious goal, right? That you're going for, you know, written down somewhere, very specific. Uh, but if not, that would probably be the first step. So let me go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about this. So one, the, each day you wanna set three attainable activity goals, okay? One personal, one professional, and one to help others. I actually made a, a Facebook post about this this morning. But by taking action in these three areas every day, you make each day victorious. The victory may or may not be in the results, you know, necessarily, but the victory is in the actions themselves. Even if what you do doesn't necessarily turn out perfectly, which I think even, you know, the thought of perfection is a waste of time and energy. But if it does, doesn't necessarily turn out perfectly as you may have hoped, uh, you know, the feeling and experience of accomplishment every day is a victory. And it puts you in the right activities to become the person you need to be in order to reach your full potential, in order to reach greatness, right? In order to feel as good as you possibly can about this life that you have to live. A personal goal could be to spend an hour playing with the kids outside or to do 30 minutes of personal self-development, uh, you know, reading and self-reflection or, you know, practice meditation, whatever the case may be, something to take care of you. It should be selfish, you know, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's, it should be all about you, something that's going to help you towards your happiness and your, your fulfillment. 
while a professional goal could be to get five new prospects or contacts that day. Uh, it could be to get, you know, three-way qualified, you know, three-way calls with your sponsor within the first 24 hours or, you know, something very specific that furthers you towards where you want to be in your business. A goal to help others could be to pick someone on your team and find out their goals, then walk them through the steps they need to take to get from where they're at to where they want to be, something like that. You know, if you show people a problem and you show them a solution, they should be moved to take action, right? So help them with a very clearly defined system for achievement. That could be something to help others, a goal that you have to help others. Um, goal setting and problem solving really go hand in hand. So I'm, I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more about problem solving than I am goal setting since since usually the goals you create are formed to solve a problem or an issue, aren't they? So I feel like it's very important to tie in goal setting with problem solving. Uh, a mentor of mine years ago trained me to ask five questions when looking at a substantial challenge or problem, okay? Um, and he taught me to spend 5% of the time on the challenge itself or the issue itself because Life happens. It happens to us all. We have a pre-launch coming up in North America, September 7th. The only thing that's guaranteed is something will go wrong. So, I mean, just understand that. Uh, my mentor taught me to spend 5% of my time on the challenger issue and 95% of my time on the solution. Here are the questions he taught me to ask myself and even write down the answers for, okay? Number one, these are the problem solving questions if you're taking notes. Number one, what can I learn from this? Because there's always a lesson to learn. You know, one of W. Clement Stone's 17 success principles is learning from defeat. Uh, it's really important to learn from each challenge, issue, or setback so it becomes a character building step on your staircase to success. Uh, another really cool thing is uh, Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone used to always say, there's a seed of equal or uh, in every adversity, there's a seed of equal or greater benefit for those who have a positive mental attitude. I'll say that again, because I kind of stumbled over them. is um, with every adversity, there's a seed of equal or greater benefit for those who have a positive mental attitude, right? So what can I learn from this is the first question. The second question is, what's great about this problem? Um, I had a really good friend of mine, great guy. He used to say, treat it like a lemonade stand. Often what's great is to be able to gain the experience by finding a way to overcome this challenge. That way you're stronger and more prepared and others can gain from that wisdom you create when you grow from overcoming. A lot of times your test is just so you can develop the testimonial to not only lead yourself through the challenge you may face again, but lead others as well. So what's great about this problem? Number three is what's not perfect yet. Yet is such a powerful word, the word yet, because it continues the creative process, right? So finding out what areas need improvement in order for issues like this to not come up again is super important and part of the personal development process. What's not perfect yet? Number four out of five, I'm going to give you five. Number four is what am I willing to do to make it the way I want it? Also, what am I willing to not do? Sometimes you got to be willing to either give up a habit or a vice or maybe, you know, you figure that, you know, you have to, to add a safeguard or, or whatever the case may be. Add a good practice to your systems while performing a certain action or task so that you don't create more challenges. So ask yourself, what am I willing to do to make it the way that I want? And what am I willing to not do? Maybe what am I willing to give up? You know, that sort of thing. And number five, the final question the final problem solved question is, how can I enjoy the process? So the good news is, uh, in 100 years, you, me, and everyone we know won't be here anymore. So it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you might as well enjoy it. If you're having challenges, issues, setbacks, whatever, you might as well enjoy the moment. You know, And there is joy to be found in any moment. Um, 
I was, you know, I'm a big mama's boy. And yesterday I was thinking about whenever my mom passes, she hasn't yet. Uh, but whenever that happens, you know, um, she's been in pain for as long as I can remember, you know? Uh, and so I was thinking, how should I react? How will I react? You know, and I'm sure how I will actually react will, will probably be a mixture of, of both and then some unexpected, but you know, there's joy in any, any situation, even the most darkest of situations. So chances are your challenge, your issue, your setback isn't something absolutely catastrophic and it's going to end the world as we know it, right? More than likely. Um, and there's also a book out there called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff because in the end, it's all small stuff. Great book. Um, there's a chapter called Beware of the Snowball Effect of Your Thinking. I always think one small little negative thought can lead to a panic attack. <laughs> I have, I've had a panic attack twice over the thought of the concept of gravity. It's weird, but uh, true. So I need you to ask yourself, how can you enjoy the process? Often the answer is in faith. Um, you know, having faith in the understanding that you're going to be a better, more effective person, a more effective leader when you overcome this challenge gives us a reason to smile through the struggle. An effective person remembers that this too shall pass. And um, if you haven't ever heard that or used that to, uh, during a, a challenging time, write that down. This too shall pass. So in closing, today's challenge is to become more sharp and progressive in the way you delegate your time on either problems or the solution. Remember, my mentor taught me spend 5% of your time on the problem or the challenge itself, 95% of your time on the solution. There is always a solution. The challenge is to start coming up with your three different daily goals and to recognize the problem or challenge, but spend your time on the solution because there is a solution in every problem. Appreciate you all. Have an incredible Monday. Now is a great time to get started on your dreams. And remember that today is the day we do something about our lives. Appreciate you all. Thanks. Love you.